Good morning. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He says, fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Let us pray. Father, in whom we live and move and have our very being, all sufficient, all empowering, God, all by yourself, the Alpha, the Omega, beginning and the end, we, your children, come seeking to worship you this morning. We ask, O oh God, that you would create in us clean hands and pure hearts. Grant, O oh God, that we would seek to do what is necessary to abide under your shadow. And as we seek to worship you this morning, may all the troubles, cares, concerns of this temporal life fade into oblivion in the light of your glory, your truth, and your grace. Now, Lord, we cancel every ploy, every scheme, every plot that the enemy would seek to lay on the hearts or minds or in the ways of your people. And we declare this morning that you will be worshipped, you will be praised, you will be magnified, Lord. And no plans of man will come through unless it is in line with your word and your will. So we make ourselves available now to you. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Isaiah 40, verse 25 to 31 says, To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory and praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place already this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, uh, for the promise that we have in your word, and we're counting on it, we're believing in it this morning. We just wanna say welcome to everyone who is tuning in now, who is tuning in later. This is the Citadel Inc. Sunday morning service, and on behalf of Dr. Floyd Antonio, and Deacon Oliver Thompson, we are here to just worship you with you this morning. So get your hearts prepared, hallelujah, get your voices prepared, amen, and uh, your, your Bibles as we're going to go through the word this morning, and we're going to declare that the Lord is good, He is merciful, He is compassionate, and this morning we are just praising him and worshiping him please check out our website and our youtube channel our anchor fm station and email and phone telephone contact is right there on the uh, website we're continuing in our spirit of fasting and consecration and prayer we're going to go all the way up until the 27th of this month some people have ended already but we're continuing dr floyd and other anointed presenters 
we do a word and prayer post on Facebook every morning so you can look out for that just to encourage your heart and keep you going and if you missed any of them check them out again on Facebook and also on YouTube and we're continuing with our communication prayer every Tuesday night at 7 30 p.m. and we're gonna be on zoom or on the phone line and if you want to get involved in that just shoot us an email or there's a telephone number there you can call and we will be sure to give you that link so again welcome let's worship the lord hallelujah hallelujah he is so worthy to be praised this morning we give him glory and honor and praise hallelujah thank you lord let's lift our hands and tell the lord that we love him in this song hallelujah hallelujah we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song Well, I just want to say that I love you more than anything Come on, let's tell the Lord this morning Lift your hands Well, I lift my hands in total adoration unto you You reign on the throne for oh, you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song. For I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Let's do the part of the song that tells the Lord we love you this morning.
and I don't know if you are ready, but we're going to give you a little time just to get ready if you want to partake in this communion time with us as Dr. Floyd is going to come and we're just going to bless the wine and bless the bread and go ahead and commemorate, glory to God, the sacrificial, sacrificial blood of the Lamb of God which was shed for our sins and we're going to remember, glory to God, the healing that it brings, yes. the salvation that it brings this morning, the victory that it brings, glory to God, because we understand that he did not stay dead, but he is alive, and uh, yes, hallelujah. You alone are worthy yes, to worship and to do to worship those who set themselves up as your enemies. He wants me to tell you this morning before you even eat Hallelujah. that your head is being anointed with his oil and somebody else, somebody else, not one person, your cup is going to overflow 
you will understand what is meant because he will make it clear to you. So as we go into communion this morning, as we get a hold of our bread and our wine, we're not just going to do it for doing its sake, but we're going to do it because he has said to us that as often as we do this, uh, we do it in remembrance until he comes. So we lift them up this morning and I'm going to serve. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of your bread and your wine this morning. And I'm going to ask you to hold them up. Thank you. Hold them up with faith. With conviction, the faith that is beyond the ordinary faith, the faith that moves into the realm of knowing. That's the kind of faith that comes with consecration. And even before you eat, before you drink, know that what God has said in his word is always valid. So Father, we lift up this cup lord and remember the sacrifice that you made on our behalf on calvary lord we remember your blood which was shed for us we remember that this morning this day this afternoon this night whatever time it is and we give you thanks for the sacrifice of your blood which is being represented this morning by this wine and lord as we lift up the bread, we remember your body which was pierced, bruised, broken. Mm. We remember, Lord, that like sheep, we have all gone astray and on you were laid all of our iniquities. You did that one for all sacrifice. So, Lord, this morning as we lift up the cup and as we lift the bread, Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would bless these emblems. They are just tokens of our faith in you and our obedience to you. But you are able as we eat and drink this morning to cause changes, not only in our lives and in our bodies, but in the circumstances around us. So, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, eat, eat all of it. So let's eat. Mm. And as you eat, don't rush. Remember what this body of Christ, remember what that body suffered for you. We, we couldn't pay. And then, as you take this cup, remember his blood which was shed for us. And as he commanded his disciples, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you this morning to drink. Drink all. What is it that the Lord is placing on your heart this morning as you eat and as you drink? What is he saying to your spirit? Before this day is over, hallelujah, not just one or two persons, but persons who have been on this journey, this is day number 17. And it is at this point that people are beginning to break me open and we'll stay here until the 27th for those who want to continue. We're not stopping you. Some people will want to go beyond. But I hear that for today, before this day is over, some people...
people, not just one person. You are going to be getting some specific answers to some situations that you have been praying for. Yes, Somebody is going to get healing. Oh Lord, I, I, I'm not the preacher today. The preacher is coming. I'm just delivering the word that I hear. Somebody is going to get a literal physical healing. Yes, literal physical healing. You will know the part of your body. We've been praying. Oh, I don't want to testify yet. I'm saving that because I've been getting healing myself. But I want to encourage you like I've been encouraging people at the, from the start of this journey. Walk with your pen, your Bible, the books that we've tell you, told you about and write what you're asking God. Write what you've been believing God for because he's answering and he's doing that today. Somebody's going to get a big breakthrough today that I'm hearing. It's not just one person, so I can't be specific. But write it down so that you can celebrate him. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed. Thank you, Thank you for the sacrifice that you have made for us, O oh God. Thank you for your manifested healing, your deliverance, your power. Go ahead and thank you for the blood that was shed. Oh, we bless you, Lord, and we thank you for the sacrifice that you have made, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our speaker this morning, Deacon Oliver Thompson, is going to come. But before he comes, join with us as we read Acts chapter 12. We're reading from verses 1 to 17 and we're reading from the New International Version and we're going to read responsibly this morning so you could just read along with us Acts chapter 12 reading from verses 1 to 17 hallelujah 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 just praise him this morning Thank praise you. the Lord hallelujah it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison handing him over to be guarded by four squadrons of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel told him. Peter followed him out of prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly, the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord had sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she realized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, 
Peter oh, is no. at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said. And then he left for another place. Thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. Let's welcome Deacon Thompson as he comes this morning to bring us the word from God. Hallelujah. Rain, Jesus, rain. Rain, Jesus, rain. him for everything a new day today Sunday we just want to give God praise Thank you. we pray as we worship today we all will be blessed and those who are still waiting want to make up their mind do I accept Christ or do I stay in my, in my sinful situation? Let us all say to ourselves, give God a chance in your life. As we worship, let the blessing oh, go up. We say thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. Thanks, Sister Rosie and the Reverend Antonio for assisting with the worship, the singing, the reading, the welcome. We just want to say thank you, Lord, thank for you. everything. Mm -hmm. Keep your Bible open. And I would like you to look at verse 5. So it's Acts chapter 12, verse 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Yes. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The text for meditation is the power of prayer. The power of prayer. This morning I encourage you to pray for those who are in prison. Yes. Those in correctional institutions around the world. That they would know the freedom Jesus offers. But also pray for those that are bound by their own imprisonment by life's desires. Yes. Pray also that they would find freedom for their souls. Interpersonal communication is an exchange of information between two or more people. 
It seeks to understand how humans use verbal and nonverbal cues to accomplish a number of personal and, rela and relational goals. Roman soldiers normally fought shoulder to shoulder with their shields locked together to create an impassable wall to the enemy. In this, in our corporate prayers, we fight together, forming a prayer wall that the enemy cannot penetrate. Put on the old armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Yes. Ephesians 6, 11. We stand not as isolated soldiers, each praying alone, but as well-equipped, mighty army, all fighting together for the same faith, for the same Lord Jesus. We stand together as Christians in 2022, pray without ceasing, to express our gratitude for God's great gifts and to be in constant communication with our Lord. It means therefore that we be in constant communication with the Lord and be conscious of His presence. Yes. When we are conscious of His presence, the normal events of each day will prompt us to pray. Lord, bless this church or bless the place that I worship. When you see a drug addict, say, Lord, save him. When you see the minister proclaiming the word, Lord, anoint him yes. or anoint her. Yes. When you see your kids going in the wrong direction, Lord, turn them around. I rebuke the devil in the same in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. These are telegraph prayers, normally prayed in silence, but the Lord hears you from heaven and answers. In the year 2022, you all have an obligation to make a prayer list, and you come in together as a team, as Christians, and pray for your church and its leaders and the different programs of the church for the unity of the body of Christ for his glory. Let us pray for our loved ones, our families and our friends, those who already know Jesus as well as those who do not know him. If you love someone, invest your prayers in them. Do not give up. You may not know what the results may be, but God will bring it to light yes. and you will be satisfied. Acts 1.14 reminds us, that 120 believers were in constant prayer and supplication after the ascension of Jesus. Then what happened? They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. This is the result of Christians coming together in prayer and supplication. Yes, hallelujah. The passage that was read tells a remarkable story of Peter in jail and his miraculous release. The Bible tells us that King Herod was unhappy with the growth of Christianity. 
And as and was determined to silence the followers of Christ. So he had James, the brother of John, put to death by the sword, and it is felt that he was beheaded. This happened during the period of the Passover, a period of celebration for the Jewish people. It is to be noted, my brothers and sisters, that the Arabs had a history of brutality. King Herod Agrippa, grandson of King Herod of the Great, who slaughtered the infants in Bethlehem, yes, and nephew of King Herod Antipas, who killed John the Baptist because he openly condemned the king's marriage as illegal because she had previously been married to Herod's brother. His name was Philip. My God. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you. We bless you, Lord. King Herod's desire was to please the Jews who were opposing the Christian religion. Peter was his next target. Mm -hmm. Not for any justification, not for any reason, but for a political gain. So Peter was arrested and kept in prison with 16 soldiers guarding him. Mm -hmm. And he chains, and in chains, with two soldiers bound to him as extra security measures. Peter could not release by himself. Have you ever been enchained in the lockup? Have you ever been in jail? Well, Jamaica, where I'm from, that situation, or the jail situation, <laughs> is very unusual. <laughs> When you're placed in jail, it's like you're placed in an oven situation where you bake. At times, sweat would be there running off your body as if water was thrown on you. There was no internal bathroom. So then, Jail is not an easy situation. And when I tried to research the jail situation in those days where Peter was placed, Peter was in the, the dungeon, the deeper part of the jail. Yes, yes. So there was no escape for Peter. Moreover, there are 16 soldiers guarding him. Plus two soldiers beside him. So how could Peter escape? When all of this was taking place, the church, my brothers and sisters, praying together for the release. The church has one foundation, Jesus Christ our Lord, and members come together through faith and teaching an expression of hope that goes beyond ordinary. Christian friends, the people of the church did not protest. The church members did not walk on the prison to demand the release of Peter. The church members did not see possible to visit the king or to lead a delegation to the king and ask for his release. In today's society, if you're locked up many times, people have a placard out there releasing, 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 or they would walk to the prison doors and demand the release of such person. Instead, they came together for a prayer meeting for Peter's release. Yes. 
Pray. Hallelujah. Pray. Hallelujah. Christian friends, in the midst of this, we know that the church is described as praying fervently and earnestly to yes. God. Yes. This is prayer that is prolonged yes. in passion that involves more than a brief honorable mention. This is the sort of prayer that involves long hours where time and energy are invested. Yes, yes. This is the sort of prayer that one would say, I tarry for the Holy Spirit. Or in other words, I tarry for the release of Peter. Acts 12, 7 to 10. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and the light shone in the cell and struck Peter on his shoulder and said, wake up. Mm. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel told him, my brothers and sisters, I want to believe that when they took Peter into that cell or the dungeon, they stripped him. I want to believe that Peter was naked inside the cell because Herod was very fearful that Peter would escape. So if you are naked, you cannot run or you cannot run very well. So I want to believe that he was naked. No wonder the angel said, put on your clothes and wrap around in your sandals. Mm -hmm. Peter had followed him out of the prison. But he had no idea what the angel was doing. A dream. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Peter was free through prayers. I could say free at last, free at last, as Martin Luther King, thank God, hallelujah. Free at last. Free was free at last. My message to you for 2022, let us unite in prayer to see God's will and his intervention. Yes. There are many occasions in which we can pray together. Family devotions, prayer groups, prayer partners, prayer meetings. The sad story, my brothers and sisters, there are prayer groups which meet to pray but spend the majority or the major portion of their time singing rather than praying. Mm -hmm. So let us get back to the drawing board and say it is prayer time now. When we gather to pray, the emphasis must be in prayer. This is the charge for 2022. When we pray together, the unity and love between believers will increase and when this is done you will be in a better position to carry out the great commission go therefore and make disciples God's master plan involves every disciple and every member to reach the world with the good news of salvation. Yes. The Bible says you will receive the poor when the Holy Spirit has come upon you yes. and you will be my witnesses. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory be to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory be to God. Yes, Lord. We thank you. Thank you.
We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. As Christians, we must unite in prayer as we face Satan. Jesus himself showed the way. The New Living Translation of Luke 22, 31, 32 reads, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to see if you as wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, yes, that your faith should not fail. Mm. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Why, Peter? Because he was on the verge of denying Christ. Yes, as Christians, when we're in the flesh, we will do some crazy things. We will deny our maker. But Jesus knew everything. That's why he was able to say to Peter, watch out, Christian friends, the fact that Jesus foreseen the danger of Peter and knowing that he was about to deny him took the occasion to forewarn him and to put him on his guard and also to add the caveat when you should be brought to repentance. The Lord knew that Peter would deny him. And if we are not careful ourselves, we too will deny Jesus. But the Lord reminded him, when you come back, when you come back, you make sure you straighten your brothers and your sisters. The Bible is reminding us that we all may have to face our Waterloo. There's a Jamaican jargon used, a Jamaica pearl of wisdom about the Waterloo. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, it yes. is. We all have to face our Waterloo. And as Christians, we all have to face our Waterloo. And let me go back in history. Napoleon Bonaparte was a thorn in the sides of a number of governments in Europe in those days. But on that final day, June 18, 1815, and with 72,000 troops, he led them against a 68,000 men, British Army, Allied forces, commanded by Arthur Willesley, the Duke of Wellington then. And guess what? He was defeated at Waterloo, which marked the end of Napoleon. Mm -hmm. If you are a historian, you will recall Napoleon was almost king of the world. There was no country that Napoleon would not invade and be victorious. That was the power of, Na of Napoleon. And he was a very good soldier planning strategies. But Christian friends, where are you in the battle today? Where was Peter? Peter was in jail, waiting to be executed the following day by King Herod. But in the meantime, his friends, his brothers and sisters in the faith were having prayer meeting behind closed doors. They were of one accord. They were in complete agreement. They were all together praying for the release of Peter and Jesus responded to them. Yes, the untimed God was ready at that time, at that very moment to ensure that his release from jail was flawless. Yes. Remember, the soldiers were there. They didn't see, they didn't hear anything. Not even when he was walking on the street, Nothing was there to prevent that freedom march. The charge of, of 2022 is 
coming together for prayer and leave the rest to God. Yes. If my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. God wants us to pray because prayer expresses our faith and trust in God. The song Cornerstone says with assurance, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Yeah. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every eye and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor hold within the veil. Weak, made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord. Within the prison walls, he is Lord. So your charge for 2022 is, let us come together in unity. Unity is strength. The Duke of Wellington then could tell his men what, what unity is all about when with his allied forces were able to defeat Napoleon Bonaparte. No longer was Napoleon a thorn in the sides of the government then in Europe. In closing the last part of history, I recall the story of General Norman Shroshkov, commander of the Allied forces in Desert Storm in 1991, who commanded 770 strong Allied forces. And in 100 hours, he was able to defeat Saddam Hussein and his men. Yes, the Allied forces in unity defeated Saddam Hussein. Finally, brothers and sisters, God responded to his servants as they prayed for Peter's release whilst he was in prison. The same God who liberated Peter over 2,000 years ago is the same God waiting for your collective request as a church for God to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. The same way Man or Shwashkov commanded those 750,000 men to fight against Saddam Hussein. The same way we as church members must come together, 1, 2, 3, 10, 20, 30, and pray, 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 yes. pray for the deliverance of yes. your brothers and sisters, your family members. Yes. Pray for the deliverance of those who need to be delivered. Yes. Oh, glory be to God. And pray for the deliverance of yourself because like Peter who denied Jesus Christ, the same way of times you will deny him. Mm. Mm. Glory be to God. And because of this, you have to be on constant watch so that you will not be led into false premise or destruction. The same people praying years ago for the release of Peter. Those same people are still around for them to pray. Ask God for deliverance to help you to release you from all your problems. My brothers and sisters, it can be done. When you are constant, Pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. yes. We all can be constant. Mm. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Despite the obstacles, despite the pressure, my charge for 2022 
is for us to come together in prayer. Yes. It is prayer time now. Peter was in the dungeon. His brothers and sisters did not match and asked for a deliverance. Mm -hmm. They went in prayer. They locked themselves behind closed doors and they prayed for the deliverance of Peter. Thank you. Let us, after 2,000 years, join them and pray for the deliverance of those who are in need of deliverance. Thanks be to God. Thanks Hallelujah. Be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Bless your name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Mm. Glory be to God. So, yes. if you are in prison you, this morning, if you know someone who is in prison, you just got the answer. God! Thank you. Don't look for their release. If you know that they are innocent, if you know that injustice is being served, don't look to your politicians this time. Look above. If you are imprisoned with the shackles of sin, addiction, you just named them. And you know people, you know people, you know people who are bothered by these things. We in the kingdom, we know. We will pray. We will pray because prayer changes things. So even though we are about the ending of this consecration time, even though we would have set aside this time primarily for fasting and prayer, remember what I said, in one of the earlier uh, settings, that this consecration is advanced preparation and training for what we do after it is over. So we will continue in prayer. I want to encourage you to lift up your faith, lift up your heads, continue to pray, pray without ceasing, pray, this, pray in the morning when you get up, uh, as you go through the day. Pray even if no one sees your lips moving or hear. You and your praying, pray. In the night before you go to bed, pray. Get down on your knees or stand and lift your hands up. Whatever posture the Holy Spirit bids you to, pray, pray, pray. Because there are some people who use the internet and every video they send is something about a shooting or a, a suicide or a murder or nothing. Please don't send me any of those negative news. I don't want to hear it. And I'm saying to you as God's people in the citadel and those who are here, stop spreading bad news. Spread the news of the good news of the kingdom. Spread. If you see something or hear something, say, listen, something is not happening good in X place, Y place. Let us pray. Send a prayer instead of the bad news. I don't want to hear any bad news. If I want to hear bad news, I could just turn on one of the regular secular stations. That's all they bring 97% of the time anyway, bad news. So if I want to go hear that, I'll go turn one on. And in the same breath, don't spend your time feeding on bad news. Feed on what will build you up. There is deliverance in prayer and God will reveal to you, reveal to me what can be done. And there is no situation that can be so traumatic, so troubling, so impossible that God cannot come through. If you don't know this God that we are talking about, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, just be genuine. Pray it in your own words. Say, Lord, I admit that I have not been living right. I need you in my life to get me out of my sinful prison. So right now, I am asking you, Jesus, not the Jesus that is paraded by so many, but the Jesus who is the King of glory, the Son of God, the Savior of the world who gave his life. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I'm inviting you 
This is the Jesus that I want. Come into my heart, come into my mind, into my soul, into my spirit. Save me, deliver me, and lead me. I pray this prayer on my own volition, with the little faith that I have that you will build up. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We will close this morning with a hymn that has been a part of the Christian songbooks for generations. But it speaks of faith without which it's impossible to please God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. My faith looks up to thee, the Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me be. From this day, holy thine. Hallelujah. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray.